So this pipe here, we're not gonna worry about. This pipe is actually for some wiring. These are two pipes we're looking at. This pipe's what we're gonna look at right now. This is our suction line, also as our gas line. Low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor. If I move the insulation back and touch this line, the heat from my hand is going to the line. There's heat transfer because the line is a lower temperature than my hand. So I've hooked a hose up to the suction port and this hose is giving us pressure. Now there is not a set pressure. Some people are like, well, what should the pressures be? There is no set pressure. All I need to do is get a pressure so I can convert it to a saturated temperature. So in this case, our pressure, our suction pressure is 150 PSI G, PSI gauge, 150 PSI. That means nothing to me without some reference. So now that we got the pressure, I know that this refrigerant on this unit is a 410A. So here we're gonna have a temperature and pressure chart and I'm gonna find PSIG of 150. So we keep going down, here's 112, 114, 144, 150. That tells me that the saturated temperature is 52.5. That also means my boiling point is 52.5. So we look at our refrigeration cycle right here, right past the metering device through most of my indoor units, this is gonna be where the refrigerant's boiling. And it's gonna be boiling with our chart we can compare. 150 PSI, 52.5. The refrigerant is boiling at 52.5 degrees. It's changing state from a liquid to vapor. It's absorbing massive amounts of latent heat at 52.5. By controlling the pressure, we control the boiling point of this refrigerant. Now the air temperature inside is 75 degrees. So there's 75 degree air going across 52 degree evaporator. The heat leaves the air and goes to the cooler refrigerant. The refrigerant causes it to boil to change state for liquid to vapor and we continuously pull in more and more heat as we're moving air across this evaporator coil. As we boil it from a liquid to vapor, then we go back through our system of refrigeration cycle. But the majority of that refrigerant, the majority of that evaporator coil is at 52.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go inside to the indoor coil. Even though my gauges are on the outside unit, my gauge will be hooked up, say, right here. It's telling me what's happening over here. This 52 degrees is not happening here. Let's go see where it's happening. So this is our evaporator coil inside. Now this unit's not physically inside the house, but all the ductwork, all the airflow touching this is connected to the inside. So we still call it the inside unit. So that's what's representing our evaporator coil here. If we take this panel off, we're gonna see that evaporator coil. It looks just like the one we have in our lab. Now that refrigerator, even though we checked the pressure outside and converted that to a boiling temperature, or an evaporation temperature, or a saturation temperature, it's really happening through the majority of this indoor coil. The majority of this coil is going to be 52 degrees Fahrenheit. So the majority of this coil is going to be 52. So right past the metering device, through most of this coil is going to be at 52 degrees. The air that's coming from the house is at 75 degrees, which is cooler, 52 degrees or 75 degrees. Now, if we think of the second law of thermodynamics, heat's gonna travel from the warmer 75 degree air to the cooler, the heat is in the air. The air is coming from the house and the air is at 75 degrees. As that air comes across this evaporator coil, it's gonna leave the 75 degree air and go to the cooler 52 degree refrigerant. So it's gonna be heat transfer. It's gonna move from one to the other. Now this refrigerant's not gonna change temperature through this section. It's still gonna be the same temperature from here, 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 and here because it's at its saturation or boiling temperature. The refrigerant's changing state from a liquid to vapor. It's absorbing heat. The heat that's going into the refrigerant simply makes it change state, but it's absorbing a massive amount of BTUs of heat energy. After we change it all to a liquid to a vapor, we're gonna talk a little bit more later, but we have vapor coming all the way back to the compressor. So here we're gonna see this suction line. This is insulated because it's low temperature, low pressure. It's still trying to absorb heat. We insulate this because I don't want to absorb heat here. I only want to absorb heat in this section. But it is low temperature. When you touch this line, it's gonna feel low temperature. So this is where that boiling point's actually happening. When we get the pressure, we convert it to a saturated temperature. 